Are you letting your nutrition hold you back? If you are a serious athlete, you have to get your nutrition in order. You have to. Um, you may think that you don't, but you have to. Dr. Jason Miller here with a little video on the importance of nutrition. This seems like a silly thing to talk about. Like, well, of course, you know, of course I need to eat better. We all know this. We hear these things float around all the time, but this video is specifically for athletes. If you're a collegiate athlete, high school athlete, a junior high athlete, a professional athlete, okay, an athlete of any level of any ability, if you run 5Ks, uh, you know, incrementally throughout the year and you train for those, you are an athlete. Here's the deal. If your nutrition is not in order, you will never, ever see the type of progression that you could and that you expect. Because nutrition, and oftentimes you hear in strength and conditioning circles, is half the equation. And remember, if you're in the gym that, or you're training, let's say you train four hours a day, which would be quite a bit. And let's say you train um, an absurd amount in terms of frequencies. You train, let's, let's say, six times a week, four hours. How many hours is that? It's 24 hours. The question is, what are you doing with the other time? What are you doing during that time? Now, obviously, you might have to work. You might be taking care of kids. You might be going to school. You might be doing a myriad of things that you have to do. But what are you doing to aid your performance as an athlete? And so, you know, we look at effective of a athlete and their their training progression you know the two of the things that I see are often neglected and I'm gonna focus on nutrition of course is nutrition and sleep and in particular with younger athletes this is often just pushed aside as well you know I can eat you know garbage out of the cafeteria or you know I'll just go home and binge on some food and I realized that if you are a young athlete you are at the whim of who provides food for you you may not have a job to be able to do that, but you can still make better choices with the food that's available or at the very worst is eat better in terms of meal timing, perhaps. Again, I don't want to trivialize the, the, the challenges that some face with food, okay? But I am saying if you have food availability and you have the ability to modify your diet, then why not? If you're serious about sports, then you should. Um, so there's the health issue, but if we're just talking straight sports nutrition here, you should want to improve your performance. I mean, I, I'll, I'll speak from my own failures as an athlete. I played college football and, you know, a hundred years ago. Um, I remember I took a nutrition class and that changed a lot of how I approached my sports nutrition. The first few years that I played, you know, all the way through high school, I never really thought much of my diet. I just ate when I was hungry and, you know, I ate more when I wanted to gain weight. And I ate less maybe when I wanted to lose weight, which wasn't very often, but um, there wasn't a lot give, you know, thought given to vegetables and protein and you know, how much carbs. And to be honest, we didn't really have a lot of information as much as we do now, as we, do, as we did then. But the point was, even my psyche wasn't that I was focused on those things. And I should have been. I could have been a lot better athlete with better nutrition, okay? And so um, I'm just gonna give a few guidelines here. If you're interested in coaching, I do coaching, but I don't, you know, it's not just about the upsell here. Uh, I want to provide information for you that if you're interested to get started at the very minimum, at the very minimum, and this is these are the hardest of, of the three macros, protein, carbs, and fat. And by the way, there's nothing evil about carbs. In fact, sugar as an athlete can be a very important part of your training. Sodium can be a very important part of your training. It should be. Um, some of the sodium limits for um, many athletes, especially operating heat, are not going to be uh, applicable to an athlete. So, you know, 2,500 milligrams, um, you know, now they even say 1,500 milligrams for, you know, those that are sedentary and have, you know, potentially uh, hypertension and those type of things. You might range up to as high as 3,000 to 3,500, depending on how salty of a sweater you are and how much you're sweating. So, you know, a lot of this depends, of course, but the point is, is that, you know, even that, in terms of sodium, you might take a look at it and say, maybe I'm having too little sodium. Now, it's probably unlikely if you're eating poorly, you're getting plenty of processed foods, but that's just one example. You know, carbs, again, sugar can be a valuable thing. So just some quick guidelines. Protein, you should be consuming at least, and I'm going to put things in kilos uh, and also in, in pounds, but you should be consuming at least 1.5 grams per kilogram of body weight per day of protein. Okay. 
Um, and that can range all the way up to 2.2. If you're really trying to gain lean mass, um, you know, 2.2, you can go higher, but I wouldn't go any higher than 2.2. Um, it's possible that if you've been training a long time, that more might be better, but 2.2 would be a cap there. Most people will say two um, for, you know, resistance training athletes, um, you know, or athletes that are really causing a lot of muscle damage. And there's some, you know, it's some debate about, you know, endurance athletes may actually need more protein than experienced weight trainers and all these different things. But those are some general guidelines, 1.5 to 2.2 grams per kilogram or roughly, uh, you know, 0.8 to 1 um, gram per pound of body weight per day. I wouldn't even worry if it, start where you're at. If you haven't been consuming enough protein, don't worry about the, the timing of it. Just get it in as much as you can. Make sure it's good sources. So don't eat, you know, a real fatty piece of beef or, you know, something like that if, if possible, but um, get it in. Again, the healthier the cut, the better chicken, you know, fish, um, egg whites, all these are great sources of protein, of course, turkey, um, you know, great sources of protein. Okay. Uh, when we look at carbs, um, I'm going to put this in, in, you know, both back and forth and you'll find one's a little bit higher than the other, but roughly, uh, on a day that you're training at the minimum, if you're training pretty hard, one gram per pound of body weight per day, or you could, you know, roughly five grams per kilo, uh, per day. Okay, and that can scale up and down. If you're an endurance athlete, they can get up really high. You can get up towards 12 grams. You might think, well, that's crazy. Well, if you're doing a legitimately doing a lot of distance running or endurance work, you're burning a lot of calories. And this, you know, this whole keto diet thing may be beneficial for ultra marathoners, like people are really running ex extraordinarily long distances. But for most everybody else, um, even marathoners, you know, getting adequate carbohydrate is going to be important. I won't go into a lot of the quality of carb here. I'm just providing some guidelines so you can get started. You know, if you're not training real hard, you can slide the carbs down, um, you know, maybe three grams per kilo or you know, half a gram per pound. Um, again, you'll find those numbers aren't perfectly the same, but that's just some guidelines out there. Um, in terms of, you know, timing, some carbs, and I'm going to say some. I'm just going to keep this vague in this video. Some at breakfast, and these are healthier carbs. This isn't sugar, but they could be fruit. I know it's sugar, but also it's fiber. So you don't need to worry about fruit being bad. But an hour or so before training, and then certainly as soon as practical after training. During training, some sugar is great. Sucrose is, a, is actually a really good way to maintain muscle mass and obviously power exercise. Um, and so, you know, again, how much you consume will be dependent upon your body size and how hard you're training, but just some general guidelines. And then fat, um, in general, I always use this rule and again, it's, you can use other ideas here, but, um, roughly 15 grams per 50 pounds of body weight. So if you weigh 150 pounds, you should get at least 45 grams of fat. Now that's not a perfect number. It can be scaled up and down. But that's just a general guideline in terms of fat. If you're trying to gain weight or you find you're losing a lot of weight and you have adequate carbohydrates, you're going to have to up your fat intake. I'm just saying that's the minimum. That's the minimum. Now, what's important here with fat is the type. I'm not talking about saturated fat. Okay. That's, you know, recommended that's only 10% of your total caloric intake. I would limit saturated fat um, down as far as practical. You won't limit it completely, and I don't think you should necessarily. Okay, depending on your situation, um, but keep it as low as possible. So monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fat, mono in particular, is going to be your best sources of fat. So you know, macro quality matters. I put a video out on that before. So just some general guidelines, it's very general. But if you're like, well, what do I even start with? It's overwhelming to me to do this. Start with the protein. Start with protein. That's going to aid in your recovery. Okay, especially if you're trying to gain muscle mass, even if you're a distance runner, you're beating up your tissues, you're wasting, especially if you're not eating enough calories, you're wasting skeletal muscle. That's not an activity you want to gauge in. Even as an endurance athlete, well, I don't want to be huge. You're not going to be. You're running so freaking much that you are going to see some lean mass loss likely anyway. You want to slow its loss and then maintain it at some point, especially if you're a very muscular person. Um, if you're already fairly lean, then and extra emphasis on holding on to what you have because, you know, as well as the smaller I am, the easier I'm on. True, VO2 max is based, just the number is based on how big you are. 
um, and your cardiovascular fitness. But if you can't put any force in the ground and you can't absorb force, you, you're not going to be able to increase your stride length. You're going to get hurt. I'm not saying you're going to get hurt. You increase the likelihood of getting injured. And you, uh, excuse me, you're not going to um, maximize your performance in stride length. And then you're going to increase the likelihood of getting injured. Okay. Sorry, I got a little garbage up there. Um, so lift weights, eat protein, no matter who you are. Um, it's not just about cardio, even if you're a, a cardio athlete. Make sure you're lifting weights and eating protein. All right, that's enough.